Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. About to head to Vegas. Gonna see you two at the Sphere. It's the opening event for the Sphere. It's been shown in videos, if you've seen on the exterior, the LED Sphere. Definitely something to check out. Look for videos on YouTube if you, have, if you don't know anything about it. But as innovative as it is on the outside, um, inside is supposed to be even more advanced with beaming technology of all these speakers to each listening section. Uh, you could, in theory, I heard you could play one section in one language. Another section can hear the concert in another language. So it's a lot of the same stuff you were seeing that I showcased that Edgar has developed in the past for the Bach and, and whatnot that's coming down the pipe in cars as well. Go check out my video with Edgar at Princeton if you want to understand how beaming technology works. I had no clue until I went to his facility and actually was able to demo it myself. And Pete the Greek was right next to me. And we were hearing two different things standing right next to us due to beaming technology of these line array speakers. But in any case, uh, I'll have a lot of content this weekend, probably mostly YouTube shorts from the sphere you're going to definitely want to check those out and maybe i'll do some long form videos when i get back but before i left i wanted to piggyback off of the last video i did that featured ai for the first time assisting me and first of all thank you guys for watching that and giving me some feedback i agree that the vocal side of things is probably the weakest part i want to get it to at least the level of like audible when you do an audible book and you play it in your car uh, but yeah, it's probably going to be best if I do the voiceovers myself, uh, but I got to, um, uh, think about, I invested money in this voice, uh, text to voice software. So I got to get my money's worth out of somewhere. So I might improve that in the future, but your feedback on that is continuing to be welcome. But what I wanted to do was there's an underlying message though, in that little presentation I gave you, uh, that AI did, it looked like a very basic presentation, certainly at the beginning. You may have um, th thought it was too basic, but if you watch to the whole thing through the whole thing, uh, at least most of you guys are very high IQ audiophiles. You probably picked up something very important, which is the subject of today's video. Real quick, I wanted to talk about the importance of frequency response, and really, what happens in this industry is we get so obsessed with the frequency response of our gear, especially speakers, in an anechoic chamber or outside, one foot away. And even as we learned with um, Andrew Jones at his facility tour, if you watch that, uh, there is a lot of sophistication just to doing that right, especially if your speak has ports. What kind of time window are you doing these frequency response? There's just a lot more than just sticking a mic a, f a foot away to telling you how that's going to relate to what you hear in your room. And of course, with the Bach, it gives you in-ear measurements at your listening position, a totally different frequency response, as you'll see if you own one, than what the specs of your speaker show, because it takes into account reflections, your ear, your pinna, ear pinna. Two different people can sit in my seat, same gear, same room, and we'll have different frequency response. So that's the point of today's video, is that if you watch that AI-assisted video I did, it talked about Fletcher Munson curve. Fawns, which is something that is often not understood in this hobby, never talked about. When's the last time you've seen anybody, either on YouTube, in uh, magazines, online, talk about this? Sometimes you'll hear Fletcher Munson, but not that much. And it shows a different level of IQ in audiophiles in their stage in their journey when I understand, when, when I see people that do get to that level. Because when you get to that level, you stop primitively thinking of gear alone or looking at specs or even evaluating subjectively, you realize the weaknesses in all of those things. I'm not saying it's bad. Like Danny Ritchie improves these speakers to flat frequency response uh, one foot away and gets those measurements. That's definitely a worthwhile venture. Not saying that's not, <clears throat> but it doesn't guarantee you're going to enjoy the benefit. Let's say he reduces a peak um, that's inherent in that speaker. But in your listening position, you listen at a low volume, and that peak was in an area where the loudness, the fawn, is actually, that peak was actually helping you hear that frequency better, or your room had a null in that area. Uh, so he's actually making it a superior speaker, but in your room and for your ears, and that the volume you listen to is actually worse for you. Same thing on peaks, dips, <clears throat> 
depending on where the frequency range is, and that's why I encourage you to look at the Fletcher Munson curve. It doesn't mean that's exactly translatable to you. Those are averages. And if you watch my walkthrough video that I did recently, rewalk through all my house and all that, I showed you my measurements. I've shown you doing how many people show you measurements in their room, show you. I also have a video where I did blind tests. A lot of people say I should have done blind tests with the inacoustic. We just didn't have time. But I've got blind test videos on my channel. But the takeaway is that when I showed my measurements, I actually build in a little bit of Fletcher Munson dip in an area where my hearing sensitivity at the volume I listen to, I think it sounds better to me than totally flat. And so depending on what volume you listen to as the Fletcher Munson curve shows you, you are going to have, your ears have a different frequency response that nobody talks about. Everybody talks about the frequency response of the gear and analyzes and judges gear and reviews gear based on that. But your ears have a frequency response. Your room has a frequency response. People that take those two things into consideration and realize you can only do so much with room treatments. You need them. You need room treatments for sure, but you can only do so much. At some point, you're going to need DSP to address perfectly optimally at least for your ears and you can hear it firsthand it's one of the secret sauces here and that's why i've always said mr dsp whatever negative you could come up with for dsp it's overridden by just the fletcher munson curve alone i can show you at your volume level whatever you listen to that some level of dsp is likely going to be required that's why way back in the day especially in car audio there was a loudness button uh, because people would listen low, but they weren't getting some of the low frequencies. So the loudness would give a low frequency boost. That was to address what the Fletcher Munson curve talked about. At different volumes, you're going to hear different frequencies for your ears, frequency response, and loudness. So that was a takeaway from that AI that I think most of you guys with the higher audiophile IQs probably started pondering and made it, it was somewhat more provocative than it primitively on the surface look like for an AI video. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. And at least step one is to give you guys a thought of don't just look at the gear and the frequency response of the gear. Those are all things you definitely want high quality in that area, high fidelity metrics, get gear that gives you that baseline so you don't have to do a lot of corrections later uh, if you have an ideal room and good hearing. But the reality is some of these subjective reviews, you don't know what volume they're listening to. They may say uh, brands or XYZ brand is uh, bass light or bass heavy. Well, what volume are they listening to in their room? When you look at some of the frequency response of the gear they're evaluating, it looks flat to me, but they're saying it's bass light. Uh, okay, so they may be listening at a lower volume. And so a lot of subjective reviewers, you say, well, that takes that into account the frequency response of my ear. I am subjectively using my ears to judge. And I agree with you, but that doesn't mean it's translatable to anybody else. So that sometimes makes it worse from the standpoint of relying on subjective reviews to say what you're going to hear. If you don't know what volume they're listening to, you don't know the measurements of their listening room, you don't know anything like that, their ear pinna could be totally different. A subjective review is actually has just as many weakness as the objective specs that I'm talking about. It's about understanding the weaknesses in both, not just being a tribe of, oh, I'm all subjective. My ears are the, the best instrument in, in the world or saying specs are all end all be all. It's more about being a higher IQ audiophile that knows the weaknesses of subjective, the weaknesses of objective measurements, and then having the tools and wherewithal to invest time into adjusting things, using DSPs, getting smart about how to do it properly. It's, <clears throat> excuse me. And so what I plan to do is have a series of videos to take things to the next step. People have asked me, can you show me how you use DSP after you come back from shows and how I can sometimes mimic what I heard at a show, get that same performance in certain areas of the song uh, on my gear. You don't have to be on this gear mer merry-go-round. You don't have, the, have to have these primitive understandings of XYZ brand is uh, bass light, XYZ brand is bass, bass heavy or warm, you know, bright. It's not really, some brands do have a flavor per se, but it's not as primitive as the industry tends to make it out. And it's not as primitive as just focusing on the frequency response of gear. 
My whole tenet of the channel is get people to that next level. It matters what's at your listening position and even more so what goes into your ears. And now we have the technology with the Bach, with in-ear mics to evaluate that and then do things that change and remeasure and get it almost instantaneously. This is next level stuff that hopefully the industry will start embracing instead of just looking st at the stereotypical frequency response or just listening to primitive subjective reviews with nebulous audiophile jargon that have no basis that can translate to you. All of that could be real to them, but how, how much can that really be translated to you? It'll also turn it to other videos I do on burn-in and other things that people primitively ascribe to certain things without thinking it all through. So hopefully you watch that AI video, get a little more in tune with that. I'll try to do some more in the future and piggyback on this topic. But off to Vegas I go, and uh, stay tuned and uh, be on the lookout for some stuff from the sphere this weekend.